uh, just a quick recap of uh, what we have done till now. So we started with the unified process. And, uh, they started looking at diagrams, various artifacts that are drawn using the unified mod language, right? And the first one that we started with was the use case diagram. And then we move ahead to the uh, use case text scenarios. Now, use case text scenarios, we started three formats of writing use case text scenarios. The most elaborate one was the fully dressed scenario. Right? And uh, then did the domain model. So the domain model was something that we ended with in the last uh, lecture, the third lecture. So the idea was to identify the various domain concepts, which I think would be a challenge for most of you, because most of you are uh, very much familiar with drawing class diagrams, right? And class diagram is the second step after creating the domain model. So when you try to do the domain model, it uh, ends up turning into a class diagram, right? So you have to be really careful while you draw the domain model. Uh, I'm from only one person who's saying that the voice is too low. Uh, check your connection voice from my side is maximum. Okay. A couple of things before that, before we start today's session, um, posted two important announcements. The first one is the syllabus of quiz one. Uh, quiz one will be conducted. Uh, you can continue to check the portal, but I think the tentative dates are 10th September to 20th September. So this is a complete week to which the, uh, the quiz will be open. You can attempt the quiz any time during this session. But it would be a really good idea if you attempt the quiz as early as possible because technology always supersedes human so don't just leave it for the last day okay. uh, please uh, attempt the quiz as early as possible you can the one thing uh, the second announcement that has been po uh, posted is about the about the mid-semester examination. So I've posted the syllabus for the mid-semester examination. Uh, I like the syllabus right now. You can just go to, uh, go to the eLearn portal or you have even got an email regarding that. So please uh, see syllabus and prepare yourself. Right? It's a closed book paper, 30 marks paper. And uh, coming back to the quiz, your quiz is uh, three weeks. Right? Your, you will, we will be having two quizzes in this course. Quiz one is of three marks, and quiz two is of two marks. Right? That will be the um, distribution. I will keep it, keep more information posted on the poll itself. Okay, there are a few questions that I'll take up uh, regarding the quiz. How many questions in the quiz? I have still not decided. So since it's a three marks quiz, there might be uh, 24 questions and uh, 0.25 each. So that would come out to be from six marks. And then we would skip it down to three marks, right? Uh, the number of questions would be MCQs uh, or maybe true and false. There is no negative marking. Uh, 
it's open for uh, for next duration. Okay, another question is the rega is regarding the weightage of assignments. Now, this is one uh, next thing that we need to uh, focus our attention on. The assignment will be of 20 marks. The step of the assignment will be to make groups. And, uh, so it would be so there will be groups of three to four people each group. And uh, my understanding of implementing this is that uh, I would be able to give you people the choice to make the group yourself. So there will be four groups. I will upload the groups. It will be really good that you connect to group partners and work over your assignments. So next ag agenda, next week I will finalize the groups and subsequent week I will upload the quiz. So that first version, sorry, I will upload the assignment that the first Phase session of the assignment is uh, somewhere before semester examination. People are not so much interested in listening to my assignment uh, concept, but there are questions coming about the quiz. Um, quiz will start from 10th September and will end on 20th September. Still, please check. Uh, on the eLearn portal, the dates for the same. I upload the dates again. I think in the, my previous mail, I have not in my previous announcement, I have not uploaded the date. I will upload the dates again. So for each one of them has been uploaded on the portal. Please check the portal for assignment for the announcements. Right. I think ahead, so these kind of questions, queries, you can keep on posting, right? The question that is coming up is the assignment time bound. Uh, this is something that I do not have an answer to right now because I, it's been two years since I have taught in no specific course. Okay, so previously the scenario was that it was not time bound. Right, I need to find out if things have changed in these two years. Right, I will upload the announcement of the same on the port itself. Okay. So if it's time bound or how many attempts are allowed, I think any number of attempts are allowed and it is not time bound. But I will still upload the announcement. So you, you, when I upload an announcement, you get an email according to that. Right? So please don't worry about that. And in case you do not see the announcement in next two five days, you can be free to send emails to me. One person says that for the other courses, it is not time bound. So yes, definitely it would not be time bound. I think. Okay, I'll still post the announcement. So let us start the class. Enough of discussion about the operational issues. A uh, lot of uh, still left to cover. Uh, okay. Today we are going to focus on system sequence diagrams. Right? Let's say system sequence diagrams. Now, very important thing before I start. What we what is a system sequence diagram? Let me first introduce that there are two separate kind of diagrams. One is a system sequence diagram, and the other is a sequence diagram. So, in a question, you have to be really careful what the system says, whether it says a system sequence diagram or a sequence diagram. Right. Now let's see what happens in a system sequence diagram. A system sequence diagram illustrates in turn of the actors with system and 
the operations initiated by these actors. It shows a particular time for a particular scenario of use case. Right. So by this line, we can understand that a system sequence diagram is drawn for a use case scenario. The first thing, second thing, that it shows the events that the external actors generate. The order, order of events is very important, and the other inter-system events that might occur. Right. The air system is treated like a black box. The emphasis of the diagram is the events that cross the system boundary from actors to systems. Right. Let us first have a look of one such diagram so that we understand what are we trying to study. This is one system sequence diagram, which is adapted from uh, your textbook, Larman, and system sequence diagram is represents sequence diagram for process sale scenario for the next generation point of sale system. Right now, you see here there is one actor who is cashier, and there is a system with my point of system, right? There's a dotted line here, this one, which shows the lifeline of this particular actor. And there's a dotted line here, which the lifeline of, of the system. OK, uh, there's a request to zoom. Zoom. I think if I, I zoom, it might not zoom for all of you. So you please use your own uh, screen to zoom it. Left hand side, you would find a button. Okay, fine. So uh, we'll have a closer look at this diagram. This is a cashier. External actor, and this is my system. Right? And then there's lifelines. There are messages that are flowing from the care to the system, and there are messages flowing from the system to the cashier. Right? This is what, what a kind of a diagram we are trying to draw. Right? Let us see the notations ahead. And then we will understand this diagram and as well as draw a few of the system sequence diagrams. So let us see the notations. The notations for the system sequence diagram. The class name a colon, a colon followed by a class name is used to represent an anonymous object of the class, right? So the system, or uh, in this case, the system, we represent the system and put two dot a call before the name of the system, which represents an anonymous instance of the system, right? So I'll just take you back. So here, if you see, Cashier, maybe it's not visible, but it, there are two dots that are put before the cashier. So it shows an instance of the cashier, and it so shows an instance of the system. Mind you, whenever we are drawing a system sequence diagram, there will be only one instance of the system. With the entire system, add a black box and create one box which represents the instance of the system and we draw a line which is its lifeline right there could be multiple external actors in a system sequence diagram 
but there will only be one single system that's very important to remember we will not break down the system into domain objects or analysis class the moment we break down the system into analysis classes then it becomes a sequence diagram it is no longer a system sequence diagram we are drawing a system sequence diagram the entire system is represented as a black box right i need to the next slide is coming to the notation the higher system is represented as a black box all dotted line represents the lifeline of each of the object right the moment we put two columns before the class name it becomes an anonymous instance of that class so in this case our system is one whole system and there is a instance of the system that we are considering and there is a lifeline cross on the lifeline shows the end of life of the object right so there might be an external stimulus which results in end of life of the system so that is represented by a class right or requests messages or events from the actors to system are drawn as solid arrows right so this is very important or messages from actor to system are drawn as solid arrows and response from the system is represented using a dotted arrow right so all the events from actors to system are solid lines whereas all the responses from the system to the actors are dots right okay now on the top of the slide so all request and events from the actors are labeled as method calls or function invocation since they invoke some function or code in the system each from actor to the system are solid lines and on top of them you will write method invocation calls whereas on top of the response from the system which is represented using a dotted line in the system writes the data or the report or the message jetted from the system to the actor right so let's just go to the previous diagram and confirm the notations again right you can see here one solid line which is going from actor to the system and the end arrow is a filled solid right then going to the next maybe it's the one this is a message or information coming from system to actor and it is a dotted line and it is a non solid arrow right it is really important to capture these notations because these notations have weightages that even if you've got the entire ssd correct but if your notations incorrect you lose almost half the marks okay it's like that right? it's almost half the weightage is for these notations right so you have to be really really careful about the notation okay line from the mess from the external actors to the system are solid lines with solid arrows and coming back from the system to the actor are dotted arrows Uh, let's see if there are more notations to add that's it okay 
Now, system sequence diagram, the time proceeds downwards. Okay, so there is a vertical lifeline. The lifeline represents time increasing downwards. The ring of events should follow their order in the scenarios. Right, so as I just told you, system sequence diagrams are drawn for UK text scenarios. Right, so whenever so we have to in a way depict that textual information in the form of a diagram. So whatever is the flow of uh, the text or the steps in a use case text scenario, the same should be the ordering of events in the system sequence diagram. Right? Okay. Next. Some called as interaction frames are used to show loops in a sequence diagram. Right. Understand uh, what is a loop? Let me just go back to the previous slide. Uh, zoom it a little. So, in this case, here one loop. So, if you remember, when we wrote use case text scenarios, we said that, uh, say for example, there is step 3 and there is step 4. Right? Now, step 3 and step 4 is repeated in number of times. That is one uh, step of loop that we use in use case text scenarios. In order to convert that into a diagram says the introduces the of loop right so it's 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 a big box let me try to get a, a something okay it's a box like this right you see this box which has this word loop written here right Oops, more items, right? So in case you know how many times it will loop, you will get some n number. Otherwise, simple uh, more items. And these are the two messages of a loop is specified, right? So in this next generation point of sale scenario, the, uh, the cashier enters an item, the system displays the total, then again the cashier enters the item and the system displays the total and this goes on till more items are there to be added. And then finally, the cashier gives the end sale request to the system. Right? This is how a loop is represented. Okay. So my SSD is a pictorial representation of a use case text scenario. Right, and one very good question we now be raised is that do we specify the alternate scenario? Right, answer is no. Okay, no alternate so in SSD. Right, so. Whatever SSDs you will see, you will find that it tries to capture only the main success scenario of the use case scenario. Right? Only the main success scenario is what is captured. Right? I finished the notations, right? So we will take up an example right now. Are there any questions? I'll just take up two minutes. Uh, he says that in this particular uh, uh, SSD, there is no end of life in the figure. Right? There is an addition for end of life. It might not exist in this particular example, but does exist. So there might be a scenario that the instance of stem ends because of an external stimuli. Right. So if the system, if that happens, then we 
uh, after a particular event coming from the external actor, then we will put a cross below the lifeline of the system that the system has closed down, right? Uh, you say that loop is not there. We, I will take up an example, and I think that has a loop, so it will become more clear. Uh, one question I do not understand, does it mean that uh, any one to n relationship or n to one relationship or n to n relationship need to be shown in loop? I really don't understand your question. Uh, it's just a loop that I'm specifying, simple for loop, simple loop over a few events which is going to happen is represented using this. Another question which says that, uh, could you please provide one example where we cannot use system sequence diagram but sequence diagram and vice versa. The two diagrams are different diagrams, right? System sequence diagram is the first level diagram which is drawn to directly convert the use case text scenarios into a pictorial representation. In other iterations of the elaboration phase, when we have our domain model also ready and we know what are the analysis class, then the idea is to refine the system into its analysis class and decompose the system sequence diagram to draw the sequence diagram. Right? They are not replaceable by each other. They are, they are created one after another. So system sequence diagram is the first step. You in the system sequence diagram, decompose the system into its analysis class, and then you uh, draw the sequence diagram in later iterations of the elaboration. Right? They are not they are not alternate to each other. I think. Uh, it no more questions. Take up an example. Okay. This is one. now for the snakes and ladders case study. We draw the system sequence diagram for this case scenario. The owner covering the game board with X and L ladders. Draw a system sequence diagram for the use case scenario of a game owner configuring the game board with S number of snakes and L number of ladders. Let's see. Let's uh, look at the diagram. I again zoom it. Right. We continue to see the latter parts. Let's start with the top. So we have here one instance of the game owner. Game owner is an external actor which is interacting with my system. Right. And I have complete one instance of the snakes and ladder system. There's this lifeline of the game owner and there's the lifeline of the system. The first step, game owner sends a message to the system, initializes both. Solid line going to the system and with a solid uh, as row and, and on top of the line you write a method invocation call right so usually the concept is an actor a method being executed uh, existing on the system okay. continuously there's a question coming uh, 
there's a man figure drawn on the top of the game owner you can definitely draw a stick man figure right uh, the stick man figure shape was not available in ms office so i didn't purposely drew it yes but you can draw the stick man figure to emphasize that it's a human external actor right okay There are some questions coming. I don't know which. Okay. Then, in response to this initialized board, the system sends a message which this uh, display board UI. Right. The system displays the board UI and prompts the game owner to enter the number of snitch. Right. This question which says, uh, what is between a solid arrow and the dot arrow? You can see for yourself here. This is a complete triangle arrow. So it's a solid arrow. This is what we called as a solid arrow. It's filled end. Whereas this one is not a solid arrow. It's an open arrow. It's not filled. right this is the difference between a solid arrow and a normal arrow okay i think i make myself clear here there is then the game owner sends the message and the snakes and gives the number of snakes that it wants to enter right so s is the number of snakes that it wants to placed on the snakes and does board right i'll just remind you of the case study so the case study was that the snakes and ladders system has a configurable board the game owner is the person who is responsible for configuring the board he can specify the number of snakes and ladders that are to be placed on the board plus for every snake the game owner is supposed to Starting and the ending point of the snake, as well as for every ladder, he has to do the same thing. Right. Once all this entry is done, then of course the system uh, creates the game board, and that is used further. Right. Game owner enters the number of snakes, which is S. Now for each snake, the of the snake and the ending point of the snake has to be entered right so what do we mean by that the mouth of the snake and the tail of the snake has to be entered so here he the system once the game owner enters the number of snakes the system prompts the game owner to enter the starting point and end point of the snake right? then he enters the start point and then enters the ending point right and this loops right so it has to loop n uh, x number of times right so here you can specify loop number of times or you can specify till more uh, till more snakes pending something like, like that so you can uh, write in any way right okay. then Uh, the entry for all the snakes is done then asks the game owner to enter the number of letters the owner enters that he wants n letters right and then similarly it loops over the uh, ladders he's uh, the game owner is asked to enter the enter and uh, starting and end point of the ladders and what this loop is also so complete the configured board is displayed to the game owner so this a system sequence diagram for configuring the snakes and ladders on a board okay, take up a few questions that are coming in
the start point sp and enter uh, sp should be two solid arrows okay uh, so uh, this message this event is what this person is saying that can we put this event into uh, two events yes you can club them uh, you can separate them out into two events i have clubbed them into one single event right do you define sp and s ep no it's it's just at the uh, uh, case in your level that you are operating so we do not know what is sp what is ep is just uh, a variable that you will assume right then the exit condition is till more ladders are still existing right so of writing more items you can write till more ladders are to be uh, uh, left uh, or till more snakes are left okay very well see from your side that in this particular diagram the alternate scenarios are not captured at all right so the user might end up entering wrong values for start point or end point this is something which is not captured in the ssp it's only the diagrammatic representation for a for the main success scenario very important that please do not capture the errors in this case okay i like a few more questions coming up uh, one question is that enter start point i have used the variable name sp and here i have used ep that the same variable name is sp and ep is what i have used here also you want you wish you can change the variable name Uh, start and end point of the snakes and start and end point of the ladders right? but uh, logically if you see the loop ends and then only this loop starts so there will be actually no overlapping right so that is the reason i have used the same uh, variable names the constraints can be mentioned above the arrows yes you can can use different function names please use logical function names of course be different from what i have written right can we separate start and end point methods yes this is question asked by somebody else just now these this message you can uh, separate out into two events enter start point enter end point this spelling wrong here sorry okay can find uh, combine the two loops in one loop uh, can you do that to think about this because if uh, there are uh, uh, snakes and lizards are different they'll not be able to combine the loop keep it separately can we use colors in the diagram you want to carry your sketch pens to the uh, examination hall please you can do that these conditions that we specify in the system sequence diagram the notation for it comes in the sequence diagram right there was one question which asked that what is the difference between Uh, what is uh, uh, i just forgot uh, our notations in the system in the sequence diagram right so your system sequence diagram has less number of notations whereas sequence diagram has a large number of additional notations and those additional notations we will see will go through the sequence diagrams okay a question can we just write enter start point instead of 
writing and enter start point with brackets right the uh, the of using the brackets is to represent a method invocation right this is what i explained while explaining the notations as well all the events from the actor to the system are method invocation calls and system returns is some data or message or report so as far as possible all the events from the actor to the system should be in the form of method invocation calls i answered most of the conf uh, questions diagram is interaction diagram right? so there is uh, there are two type of interaction diagrams one is sequence diagram and the other is communication diagram right in our next session we will go through interaction diagrams one of which is a sequence diagram and there is a uh, communication diagram right okay uh, enough of questions on this let's move on to the a uh, step right so these are the activity diagrams right okay more question uh, um, very funny question i don't know <laughs> uh with snakes and ladders or point of sales case study in the examination i, I don't know what i should and give you an answer for this you can go through all the case studies that we have discussed but definitely you will not get any question directly from any of these case studies you get a new case study on which you have to which you are required to understand and draw the uh, diagrams which are right that's it for the uh, system sequence diagram i have one more example of the system sequence diagram uh oh i think i still have time for that right so then later we can spend one hour on the activity diagram so i'll just uh, screen with the now a while okay right in the chat also okay this is a system sequence diagram uh, this is for inviting a player to win the game specified mode with specified number of coins okay if you remember uh, we had written this use case text scenario where we invited the where the game owner invited a player to join the game in, uh, or even mode with a specified number of coins so uh, let's see what do we have here a uh, marker in this okay Uh, okay uh, before start there is a quick question which has come up why there are two actors in this right so uh, i mentioned while i was mentioning the system sequence diagram my system is the black box right but there can be number of actors that i might represent as per the scenario in the system sequence diagram so this was the reason why i drew this particular diagram to show you that it is not always the interaction between the two to the game uh, the actor and the system right there might be an interaction number of actors with the system 
right? In this particular scenario, there are two actors which are involved. Right? The game owner sends an invite to the player to join the game. Let's understand this particular system sequence diagram and then uh, answer your questions. One quick question that I'll pick up is that uh, we not place all the actors on the left at the system on the right. That, this is really true. You can place them anywhere. The plan that I have done in this is with the idea so that it is more clear. Right? If you place game owner and then you place the player and then you place the system, it's correct. Okay, let's uh, uh, see this. So now here, sticks and ladders and the player, right? Each of them is a lifeline. Game owner sends a invite, right? System forms this invitation request to the player, right? Then the player uh, you see, it's a solid line. The player is invoking some system event, right? So player says accept invite. Okay. Then system sends this to game owner. In the request accepted by player P. Alternatively, what you can do here is you write, give this player a name. Right? The moment you type in P here, it's not it longer becomes a anonymous object, but it's a named object, right? And it is the name object P to which the game owner is sending a invite request to. Okay, once the invitation request has been accepted, the game owner sends a message to the system, get the mode, mode request, right? The system sends a more request sends the message to the player more request by the game owner or even right the sends back or selected m m is the mode that has been selected by the, the player the mess the system forwards this request to the m mode selected by p and round Then game owner says, get coin. How many coins does the player want to be placed on the board for him? That will send a coin request to the system. The system forwards this request to the play of coin request by game owner. The system, uh, sorry, the player sends back the number of coins, which is then sent by the system. So N coins selected by P. Right? Once it is all done, the game owner says to the system, display board UI. It invokes the display board UI and finally the system returns the board UI to both the actors. This is your system sequence diagram for a player to join the game in a specified mode with specified number of coins. Okay, so I will take up few questions that are moving in chat. What would request? Uh, remember the case study, the player can join in even or odd mode, right? So if he joins in even mode, he able to move his coin only if he uh, get an even number on the dice, other not. Okay. Are you able to read the chat because the messages are flowing very fast? Let us try and pick one by one. Will 
SSDB posted on the portal, yes. Don't you draw till the game ends? No. Scenario focuses only on uh, the use case tech scenario of the game owner requesting the player to join the game. That's it. This is the focus when we wrote the use case tech scenario. The same will be the focus when we are drawing a, re a pictorial representation of the use case tech scenario. Oh, one question, can the uh, carols jump across the lifeline of the action or a system, right? Please try and draw in such a way that there is no jumping that I have to do, right? In case it is absolutely necessary, then I don't know if you know, there is a semicircle kind of a symbol which is drawn to represent uh, there is a jumping right? if events in a lifeline are fixed or it depends on the user to draw no it depends on the user to draw there is no fixed number of events or messages that can flow on the lifeline okay Converting the use case diagram to SSD, there is no user case. It's the implementation with function and loop. We are not converting use case diagram into SSD. Very right. We are converting use case text scenario into SSD. These are two different things, right? So you might have missed, a, missed out the previous session in which we discussed use case text scenarios we are providing the system sequence diagram is providing a pictorial representation of use case text scenario okay one good question but if the order of actor and system is interchangeable right so if i place on the left most side, if I place the game owner and then place the player and then I place the system, then uh, one of you say that instead of sending the invitation message to the system by owner, I would send the message directly to the player. No. That way. Okay, the game owner will send the message to the system and system will send it to the player. Luckily also you think the game owner will not maintain uh, instances of the player. Right, it's the system which will be maintaining the instances, instances of the player. The player will join in the game. The player will not join the game owner. The external actors all interact through the system, right? The external actors all are connected to the system and they all interact with each other through a system. The game owner will not directly send a message to the player, okay? And more messages. If in one system, how will we place them? All on one side, system on the other side, any way you can place them. Okay, if the interaction with one of the actors is pretty less, and more with the two actors, then you can place the third actor on the right side and club the rest of them together. The placement is only to be done in a way so that it is more readable. That's it. Player, there should be only one coin, then one coin count. I think you've not read the case study. The case study says that each player can join with any number of coins. 
there is no failure case where doesn't accept the invitation we do not capture alternate scenarios in this right it uh, the as the only captures the success scenario not go to the alternate failure scenarios len player is the class name and p is used to name the object okay the question is a colon player right so till p not there it was an unnamed object of class player it is called an anonymous object the moment you put some uh, characters uh, In front of the colon, you give it a name. So in this case, it is the P object of the player class. It will be good if you yourself get out. pick up same case study and draw some other use case uh, uh, draw some other system sequence diagram right so visualizing it and understanding it will not help that much unless you draw some diagrams yourself okay please do not come to the examination so that your examination is your for instance of drawing such diagram please don't do that to yourself must draw and practice some diagrams before hand right i will also try i expect the submission of the assignment before semester examination so that you have drawn some diagrams yourself okay we'll just take a uh, 5 minutes break here i will go back to the slides and we'll come up after 5 minutes and uh, take over the activity diagrams